Hi folks, this is Brigand Survival, formerly known as Renegade Survival, okay, had to change the name, so it's the same channel with a different name, okay, good to be back on YouTube. So the purpose of this video is to show you my daily hiking backpack, okay, this is not a full bug out backpack, and it should be noted that I have an EDC backpack as well, which is usually in my vehicle, so the EDC backpack and the hiking backpack together will offer a lot of redundancy, which is good because in prepping we want redundancy. But the hiking backpack is very minimalist. This is just for daily hikes. This is not for extended hikes in the woods or camping, extended camping excursions. This is really just for daily hiking. And um, for the purposes of just daily hiking, I think this is overkill. But um, it also adds a little bit of extra weight when I hike to give me a little bit of extra exercise. I know some people are probably looking at me like, well, you look heavy enough, you really got to add extra weight. But I do like to challenge myself, and I was a member of the armed services, so I know what it's like to go out with, with heavy packs and things like that. This pack is probably about 40 pounds, so a lot more than you would... I mean, realistically, you could have a fanny pack with most of the stuff that you could just need for a daily hike, right? But this is just... Um, this is just really just... A little bit of overkill but definitely something to think about and there are some lessons you can learn when you're building your own pack for whatever purpose it may be whether if it's bugging out there's some things you can learn from this pack so but again this is just a daily hiking pack so the pack i chose for this purpose is the mystery ranch asap um backpack and ocp okay um or multicam um this is a pretty expensive brand okay you don't need to really buy a pack that's this expensive, but I just wanted the added durability. And I know that this pack will last me my entire life. This pack will actually outlast me. So again, that's Mystery Ranch. The reason I like Mystery Ranch is because of durability and because uh, most of the components are made here in the USA. Um, so that was a big factor. But um, as far as durability, they're among the best you can buy. So we're going to start with the main component first. There's a little sneak peek at what I got inside. Okay, here's a look at everything from the main compartment laid out. Remember, this is the main compartment, not that second compartment you see up top in the bag. So if we want to start with shelter items first, being the most important, you have a SOL, Survival Emergency Bivy, and you have a USGI Industries Rain Poncho and Camo. So you have concealability and a shelter item and also a way to stay dry. And you also have a signaling, but also a shelter item as well. So considering the clothing part of your shelter package, you got a Patriots camo sweater, hooded sweatshirt. Okay. And then you got a Russell pair of leggings. It's important to have base layers. So a base layer helps wick the sweat away and helps keep you dry and it helps your helps your body naturally evaporate the sweat, which will help you stay cooler. So when you're out in the cold and in, in cold, wet, windy conditions and you're moving around, you tend to sweat a lot. And then when you stop moving to hunker down, you tend to get very cold. So the base layers will help mitigate that and they help naturally eva evacuate sweat from your body. So the other base layer I have is a, is a base layer um, long sleeve shirt by Sport Tech. Okay, this is great um, in conjunction with that Russell pair of leggings. Okay. <clears throat> so I have a pair of gloves and just a hat. I bought those um, before I climbed Mount Washington just in case it got cold. And um, they've, been, they've been great for hiking in the winter. So, so for food... I have uh, just uh, four Nature Valley Crunchy granola bars. And then behind those, I actually have a little bit of tea. So if I'm, if I'm cold, I have uh, a way to make green tea, which is a great morale booster and uh, could be potentially life-saving. I would just use this, this cup here, put it directly in a fire, and then just, um, just put the tea inside and just brew it. And... Um, it would prevent me from getting hypothermia and potentially dying. So then you got some, uh, just some great value, which is the generic uh, mountain trail mix. Just have, uh, I think five packets of these. 
So just a good thing to have. Okay, so medical. That also should be up in, in your priority list, okay? This is by my medic. It has a tourniquet, trauma shears, emergency survival blanket, and uh, several other things. And then this is just a shovel, um, which can help build shelters and just kind of clean everything off before you start a fire. This water bottle can also be uh, boiled um, inside of a fire if you need to. It's filled with water. This is called a Sub-Zero Stainless Steel. Um, some bungee cords for setting up a shelter. Um, some tea light candles. A Poland Spring water bottle. So why so many pots? Well, because it's just great to have them. You want to be able to boil a lot of water. You want to be able to get a large amount of water. You don't want to keep having to go leave your tent, leave your shelter, and keep refilling with water. So it's good to have multiple ways to, to boil water. And me being a big person, it's just I'm going to need more water than the average person. Probably less food, but more water. So, so that's everything in the main compartment. Let's look at the second part. Okay, so there's a look at the items that are inside my secondary compartment of my Mystery Ranch ASAP backpack for daily hiking. Okay, so again, this bag is minimalist, but you could really get by for a few days in an emergency if you had to with this bag. So you have an AO FAR compass, which I believe I got on Amazon. It's a military style compass, one that I'm trained and familiar in. Right there you have um, a very cheap radio. Uh, could definitely need an upgrade, but um, it's protected inside of a plastic bag and it's got the batteries. Um, headlamp by Ozark Trail. You can get those at Walmart. Uh, pro tip for storing flashlights. So there's a flashlight and headlamps. So one of the biggest issues that you'll find is that they'll turn on inside of your bag unexpectedly. And that's the worst thing that could happen because if you pull it out and it doesn't work, well, you're in big trouble. So one thing you can actually do is you can actually reverse the batteries inside of the flashlights and inside of the headlamp to ensure that that does not happen. So if I actually click this right now, it's not going to turn on. This is not going to turn on. Okay. But the batteries are fully charged. They're just put in the opposite directions. So that's how you ensure that, that those don't turn on. You got a magnesium, ferrocium rod, six inch. Uh, this one's by Bay Fight. Got that on Amazon. This is, um, this is a Smith & Wesson m and uh, folding knife. I think, what does it say, M2.0. Some Kleenex in case I need to go to the bathroom. Should include wet wipes too. Write in the rain notebook. For those of you who are not familiar with that, it's um, it helps you take notes or you could use it for fire tinder too. But the main thing is that it's waterproof. So it's a waterproof notebook. It's a field notebook. Two pens. So Under Armour face mask, okay. Then you got some fire starting type of materials. Lip balm and, and uh, chapstick can be used to start fires. Anything that's really petroleum based can be used to start fires. You can also use cotton balls mixed with petroleum jelly to create fires. It's one of the most preferred methods by survivalists. Got some duct tape. I got a military style sewing kit in case I need to sew anything up. So camo beanie. Now you'll realize that this is actually my second beanie and that's uh, that's to stay super warm. Or if maybe if I'm with somebody else, then I can just give it to them. So, but I also have a neck gaiter. So, I mean, right there, you got a beanie, you got a neck gaiter and a face mask. So that's one thing. If you've really been out in the cold, you really know how important it is to have extra layers and to have extra redundant clothing in case you lose one or in case one of them fails. So don't underestimate clothing and shelter. That's the one thing that I would say is the main takeaway from the military and from having gone out in bad, bad conditions in Vermont, New York, Louisiana. When it's really cold, 
you better make sure you have extra layers and you better have like two beanies is like something that you wouldn't even think about. But if you were to lose a beanie and, the, and that could be like, that could be like a death sentence. So that's the reason I have two. And then I have some pink zip ties. Okay. They're just, in case I drop one of them, if they're pink, I can see them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see them through a pile of leaves. If, if they were black or if they were camo green or OD green or if they were cardi brown or something, and I dropped them in leaves, I probably wouldn't see them. So I would go with pink or orange because by the time you zip anything down, it's not going to be that visible. And there's also ways to conceal it if you had to. So, and this, this is a minimalist bag. This is for daily hiking. This is not a bug out bag. So nobody's coming after me necessarily, right? But this is not so much about concealment as it is about just surviving the night or surviving two days in a storm or if I'm injured or whatever. So this is just a daily hiking backpack. So now let's just take a look at everything laid out. Okay, there's a look at everything all laid out, folks. All right. That's the complete kit. Tell me what you think.